Hello everyone, it's Michael here from Custom Bike Fit and in today's video what I'd, what I'd like to do is a bit of a deep dive on armrests. Um, armrests are something that you're going to use on a triathlon or a time trial bike and uh, it's an area which I think is really important. Obviously you're going to be supported by your armrest in that time trial position. Some manufacturers give this a lot of focus, other manufacturers don't. So what I tend to find is some bike manufacturers will manufacture this component themselves. Others will outsource to a third party. There are certain companies that, sent, that tend to do it really well. So I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to focus on the things that I look for in an arm cup, personally for myself and for my customers. And I'm also going to bring in and review some of the arm cups that I see on existing bikes and some bikes that you may be able to buy second hand. So really what I look for in an arm cup is is just that. I want the arm cup to cup you. So we need to have a sort of cup shape because this needs to hold you in position. It needs to cradle you. It needs to support you. So the first thing we want ideally is some sort of a cup. The second thing we want is a bit of real estate. You know, if the pad's really small, you're not going to get a lot of support. And the third thing is we want four aft movement. We want an arm cup that has a lot of holes in it so we can move the pad forward, we can move it back, we can move it to one side, we can move it to the other. So a lot of functionality. Now, one of the most popular bikes that I see is the Giant Trinity. And I see a lot of new bikes and I see a lot of old bikes. And if we go to their first, the first generation of the Giant Trinity, you can see here, it's a very small pad, number one, or very small armrest, number one. And number two, there's not a lot you can do with it. This thing, I used to just take these off and put on some profile design pads. They're really not very good at all. The new generation of the Trinity comes with something very similar. There's a bit more fore aft movement, but it's not really a cup. There's, you, you don't really know where to put your arm on this or where, you, where to put your elbow on this. It's good in terms of the amount of real estate you have but the fore aft movement isn't very good and it doesn't hold you into position. So again, the Trinity, these generally come off and I'll replace them with something else. And the female version of the Trinity is the liver vowel. And these have come off a liver vowel. Again, we've got the same sort of problem. We don't have an awful lot of real estate and we don't have an awful lot of holes. So we can't move this, this armrest back and forth. It's really not uh, ideal. And we're talking here about bikes in that you know, six to ten thousand dollar range. You th you would think that they would come up with a better solution, but Giant have decided that they're going to manage this themselves at this moment in time. So another very popular time trial bike or triathlon bike is the Felt IA, and again we have the same problem that we have with the Giant. We've got an armrest that isn't very big, number one, and we don't have a lot of fore aft movement. We can't move this pad, uh, pad around a lot. So we, I think in particular with the Giant and with the Fell, when we have those integrated front ends, we want to be able to move things back and forth because we have no stem. And we really don't have that ability with these armrests. The other thing is that the, uh, the arm pad itself on the Feld IA, it's kind of a rubber material. And I tend to find when people sweat, they're moving around, sliding around on this pad. So again, these aren't great. The specialized shiv, you'll find a pad like this. Again, we do have a sort of cup, but there's no, again, not a lot of fore aft movement in here. And I tend to find if you move these out too far, you get a fair bit of flex in them. They're not, they're not great. I guess they're a pass. And moving on to the Canyon, and the Canyon uh, Speedmax CF SLX. So the top of the range, you can see here, we do have an arm cup, but again, it's a small piece of real estate. And again, we don't have a huge amount. We've got some fore aft movement, but we don't have a lot of movement either side. So again, this is a pass. This is the pad that goes on here. It's a pass, but they're not fantastic. All right. Moving on to another time trial bike that's very popular, which is the uh, Trek Speed concept. They have an arrangement such as this. Again, a, quite a small amount of real estate, but I rode this bike for four years. And there is good fore aft movement. You can move these pads around. The difficulty I have, or the issue I have with these, is that they use a, a bolt which takes a two and a half mil head. Now, you're going to sweat on your armrests. 
and I tend to find anything under a three mil head, so that's a three mil Allen key to tighten and loosen those, they tend to uh, round out. You get a bit of sweat in there, a bit of corrosion, and you can't move these things around. So another piece of advice would be, if you do buy a time trial bike, and you find that the bolts, the head of the bolts is very small, replace them with something with a four or a five mil ideally uh, bolt because you can move those a lot easier and you're not gonna have that issue if you're sweating onto the pads. Okay, moving on to some of the better pads that I see. And these are guys that manufacture aero bars and pads and armrests specifically for aero bars. The first one is Sync Ergonomics. And you can see here now this is a large cup, number one. It's a, you can see it's, it does in fact cup you. So that really does hold you in position. There's a lot of fore aft movement. I would like to see another uh, set of holes in here. I'd like to see this opened up a little bit further to suit a few more riders. What I tend to find with these is if the rider has a, is a big guy and has a big forearm, they can't actually fit into this cup. It is a little bit narrow but I am a big fan, and these work really well with the Giant Trinity and the Liver Vow, okay? The downside of this armrest is that you can't buy them individually. You have to buy the wedges and the extensions, the high hand extensions that go with this. So it goes from a $100 purchase, and I'm talking in Australian dollars, to $360. Now, in a lot of uh, scenarios, for example, with the Giant, this makes a lot of sense. And I've done this also with the Felt IA on a number of occasions. But it's just a bit of a gotcha. You can't buy these individually. You need to buy the whole set being the wedges and the extensions, but they are a very good armrest. The next one I want to go to is Profile Design. And everybody knows I'm a fan of Profile Design. This is their ergo armrest. So we have a, a decent amount of real estate here. We have a cup and we have an awful lot of movement. So there are 90, that's a nine zero, different fit options in this armrest. So I'm a big fan. These retail for about $90 Australian. In my opinion, they are the best value and the most versatile armrest on the market. And you'll see these armrests on an awful lot of bikes. So Canyon, on their Speedmax CF, not their top of the range, but the one down, they go with the profile design. You'll see this on a lot of Cervelos, um, Quintana Roo. Number of manufacturers use this product. I'm a big fan and it's one of my go-tos. I always have two or three sets of these in my studio. These are fantastic. Okay, now moving on to a manufacturer that really does work on the front end of the bike. This is what these guys do. This is a company called Revolver. Actually, they do make wheels as well, but they make exceptional aero bars, carbon aero bars, and they make a range of armrests as well. And I've got a couple here. This one's called their Ergo Armrest. And what you can see here is not just a cup, it actually has um, support at the rear of the arm cup and the benefit of this is if you want to get a really high hands position imagine if we're on for example this arm pad and I want to bring my hands up nice and high I'm going to be sliding down all the time the benefit here is that we're held into position we're locked into position now if you want to ride with an ergo and that's ergo mantis getting your hands up very high and close to your face to close off that frontal surface area this is a great solution I haven't seen anything else quite like this on the market. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, a lot of fore aft movement, a lot of movement to the left and right. And they actually come with some really deep pads. So you can see here, this is a nice thick, it's about 10 mil pad. And they send you two sets of pads with, with each set of carbon armrests. The downside is number one, the cost. So in Australian dollars, something like this is gonna set you back about 300 bucks. They're not cheap. But if you're serious about your triathlon and serious about comfort, it's a worthwhile investment. What I would say about the high hands position and using these armrests in particular is your bike handling skills have to be extremely good, okay? Once you start pushing your hands away from yourself and closer to your face, 
we start to lose a little bit of control of the bike, you'll find that a lot of people want to hold things back in. This won't allow you to do it because you are locked into position. Okay, that's number one. Um, and there is no movement back and there is no movement to the side. So if you want to get your hands high, this is a great solution, but you need to be very good at bike handling. Okay, I've tried these, I like them, but I did find them a little bit sketchy. I think they're gonna take some, uh, it would take some practice, but I know a number of athletes here in Queensland that are using these particular Ergo Mantis uh, armrests from Revolver. The ones that I'm trialing right now, again, are a product from Revolver and they're called their Pro Rock armrests. And you can see again, this is, this is, these are huge, okay? They make two sizes. There's a smaller version of this for UCI legal time trials. This one you can use in a uh, triathlon. This isn't UCI legal. But again, you can see the depth of this. It's very, very deep. There's a lot of real estate. So even if you've got a big forearm, we can come in here. And we're supported. I like to see the armrest at the back of the elbow, number one, here. But then if we can support the forearm as well, we can distribute load. And I have a high hands position, not an, uh, a mantis position, but a high hands position that allows me just to lock in here. These are great. But again, same sort of pad, 10 mil thick, so they're really, really comfortable. You're looking at about $300 for this particular armrest. Now, I am talking to the manufacturer and I'm hoping that we can do something to bring that cost down because I do think these are a great solution. If you are looking for something and you just want to go and get you something yourself, again, I think the best value for money is the profile design, ergo armrest. But if you want something that's a little bit more, uh, uh, if you're prepared to spend a little bit more money for a little bit more comfort and functionality, I do recommend the revolvers, the revolver armrests. If you're having trouble whatsoever with comfort in that aero position and you think that your armrests are contributing to your, to your problems, just send me a message. You know, hit the button below, send me a message, send me a personal message via Facebook or YouTube and I'll see what I can do to help you. And thanks for your time and I'll see you again in the next video.